Do you wear a bowler hat? You, I know you'd wear a cape. I did wear a trilby. You wear a trilby, really? Mm. You must have looked like a... That's brilliant. What? Because you're a Mancunian. Well, look, there was a phase, wasn't there, in about 90... When was it? I think that was just round your way. <laughs> it might have been. It was in Manchester. They still get a job lot of trilbies. And that persuades you kids. Yeah, I, I tell what's trendy. No, you know, no. Sean Ryder wears one of these. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Quid. And then everyone in your street had trilbies on. But you've never worn a bowler? Never. What about Kangol bowler? You it's might think about it. Again. I'll yeah. tell you what. I, I would like to wear a bowler hat in a, in a dark hat, but I'm worried I look like one of those little fellas off the Home Pride advert. The Home Pride guys, they've been persevering with the bowler for years. They still look good in it, though, They're still they? looking good. They're dapper guys. Yeah. There's a lot of, um... The Jolly Green Giant, he had quite a distinctive look, which is obviously one I've been thinking of exploiting. What, the, the, the little, um, Oh, the, I know, the little, um... Uh, yeah. sort of like a little dress... Was it Corn Croft? Cro corn yeah. that made up his little skirt? Yeah. What yeah. was the Jolly Green Giant so jolly about? Probably he was very pleased. It was kind of just been the sweet corn and the peas. No, I reckon it was his enormous jolly green knob. <laughs> I mean, he must have got up every day and gone, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been so happy. The, thing, the only thing that's like, in the case of the jolly green giant, or like when Gulliver was a giant and he was in Lilliput and all the Lilliputians, yeah. like, yeah. they helping him out, they were feeding him and stuff. Yeah. If you're a giant like that in that yeah. situation, how do you sort of have a little sneaky... Tug. You know, a little tug, a little J. Arthur rank. I don't know, because it's like... It's, it's very you, tricky to do that. Because you're as big secretly. as their mountains, exactly. aren't you? You can't hide. They, they go, oh, you know, I mean, there's no... There's no the, well, yeah. All it, the little village probably just thought it was a tidal wave or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's pretty grim, though. Yeah. I mean, the tidal wave's pretty desperate. I know. It's how would he have gone to the mayor and said, I need... I oh, need a Kleenex the, the size, size of a yeah. tennis court. Yeah. And a gigantic copy of the Daily Star. You yeah. know, I never understood with giants how they actually got that big in the first place, because what food was around to make them because not only were they like big big but they were mostly big they, like, did, they ate well they ate whole cows probably when, Carl, you, it, know, you know you know it's not well documented Carl. you is know it? you know they don't actually exist and never have mm. okay right it's time for a feature i think <laughs> carl i've got so there was a tv show i watched once on the, the history channel this is the history channel yeah it was the history of werewolves Right, the history of werewolves, yeah. and the whole show is predicated on the fact that at the end we'll tell you if they ever existed or not. Yeah, just waiting. And they go, oh, come on, we're going to be late. Hold on, he's going to tell us <laughs> exactly. if they existed or not. Carl werewolves. Michael Aspel was in it, and Michael Aspel is a top broadcaster, and therefore would not associate himself with something that, that did not exist. Can I just give you a little fact that someone's emailed in for you, Carl? They've sent an interesting fact for you. I think you're going to be interested in this. Don't read it on the email. Let me read it for you. I think you'll be excited. An interesting fact from Carl. That's from Toby. He says, Attila the Hun yeah. punished some fella who annoyed him by cutting off his arms and legs, you'll love this, and stitching his arms back where his legs should be, <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at the little smile that's just cracked on his lips. That is the kind of fact you've been waiting for all day, isn't it? So go on, again, so... so... Attila the Hun, right, some guy he didn't like, he cut off his arms and his legs, and he stitched his legs on where his arms should be, and his arms where his legs should be. <laughs> Look at him looking at his body trying to picture it. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I'll, let, I'll let it sink in for a little while, then I'll ruin it for him. Carl, what are you thinking? I'm just picturing it. Right, he would have died. It would have been tokenistic. There's no way that person could have lived through it. Mm. So, it was just for to the Hun's fun. He probably put him on on a stick out outside his gate or something. There's no way in those days that he could have gone through complete limb amputation and... So would he have wore a jumper for pants? Who's <laughs> 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 the winner of the competition? From Walthamstow, it's Joe Ogden. Well done, Joe. You got the correct answer, which was what? The fellow with two heads, number 50. Number 50. Is that it? Are we off? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Uh, Bye. More of the same drivel next week. Maybe. Bye. Bye. Um, well, uh, we actually did a bit of planning for this as well. We thought we're going straight to a paid audio book. Let's plan it. Let's not just come in here and shambles. We've booked a studio. We're in a nice little studio in West London. Our own little... It's all to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, we just right, give right. the chairs. Give the chairs. Yeah, Steve didn't get a good chair, but yeah, well, yeah, I got a rubbish chair. Look how big I am. I have a giant sat on a like a kiddie's chair, <laughs> and you've got. Look at you. You're almost half asleep, as usual. Carl, you, I don't know why you need a good chair. What do you mean? I don't, why do you need a good, comfy chair? Look how you're sat. This, this is you can be perched on a stool. You can be perched on a box. 
Just Why don't we swap chairs? Well, why do you want to, what's wrong with you? Because it's, look at it. Is this how you normally behave? You always get your own way at home. Is this how it is? Yes, oh. in my house I do normally sit in a chair that I find comfy. Will you be happy if I swap chairs? Yes, I, I had to get him a special chair. I bought some chairs for the office. I bought them. He went, oh, don't like this one. So I went and got him another one. It was actually cheaper than the one he had. He said, yeah, I like that more. Well, there you are. That's a lovely happy ending. You ended up saying I didn't money. give him a happy ending. I did not give him a happy ending. He just sat there and we worked. There was no happy ending Do you get this involved. when you be happy? I think I would be happier What do you mean, soon? think? It's like Goldilocks. Are you going to be happy with this or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you let me try it on for size and see how we, how we get on? This is... I feel guilty charging for this. <laughs> well, let's just, just try it. How's that, sir? Is that okay? That's a nice chair, actually. Well, you're going to move the chair, so you're going to sit... Oh, no, it's the whole dynamic. No, I'm going to move the chair, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you got to I can't, you can't... It's got to be me and Steve one side and the little round twonk the other. Okay. <laughs> Right, okay, we're going to start any minute now. It's extraordinary. But listen, seriously, I went home, I found this book, I found a couple of facts which I think are more up your street. Evolution is a little bit complicated, a little bit big. But this one, I think, I think we may have mentioned it before, I think you'll like this. This is from a book of facts and trivia. The Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. Yeah. That's interesting to you, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any more there? I'll or? see if I can find Oh, he's interested. Uh, yeah. Can get insane. the staff. That did you, happen, you, yeah? You pay peanuts, happened, you get yeah. monkeys. <laughs> and then what did they go off and do after that? Well, it doesn't say. So I love it. the fact that he think, right, okay, so it, it is mine. <laughs> it's now the monkey going, it's 5.30, I'm off, you, you know I was going early today, and they go off maybe dancing or something, or they come in late. No, uh, I think you th I think you, well, I, th I assumed what you meant there is that that was their first career move. And yeah, then they well, went they, on. <laughs> it's like yeah. actors waiting to be discovered. <laughs> <laughs> play a record. Uh, just one more before you play a record. Oh, man. You're like this. Peter the Great. You ever heard of Peter the Great? No. Okay, well, anyway, Peter the Great had his wife's lover oh, executed. You'll love this, Carl. Right, so he, he, his wife had a lover. He had him executed, and he put his head into a jar of alcohol, and his wife had to keep it in her bedroom. Do you understand? That's every time she saw every morning she'd wake up, and there was her lover's head he, in a jar. He took his head off. He, he took his own head off. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> she had a lover. And, oh, never mind. Never mind. Mad World on XFM. We just had a <laughs> we just had a text, Rick, from Andrew Barnes. He says he did. He watched the same documentary. It would appear yeah. as Ricard did in the week. And he says here, just to clarify, the leech nose man got it up there when drinking from a muddy stream. Uh, and he goes on. One can only imagine the frightenedness he experienced. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> Ex explain to him once more to what, what what happened with Peter the Great. All right. So we've got Peter the Great. Yeah. Okay. And his wife had a lover. That's another side. man. Another man. Not uh, Peter the Great. She she was having an affair with someone else. Right. And Peter the Great, he found out about that. Okay. Yeah. So he sliced off this bloke's head. He killed him. He executed him. Right. You, 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 you with me so far? The, the fella who, who oh, she Jesus. was- Oh, Jesus. She was seen for a bit. Yeah, there's only two fellas involved there's two yeah, people yeah, yeah. involved. One's Peter the Great, the other one's right, not. Right. The guy that's not Peter the Great- Derek- Derek the- the- <laughs> Derek the Terrible. <laughs> Derek the Rubbish. Yeah. Right? He's having an affair with Peter the Great's missus. So Peter the Great slices off his head, puts it inside a jar of alcohol to preserve it, and puts it in his wife's bedroom. So every morning she wakes up, she sees her dead lover's head. You, you'd have thought he wouldn't have wanted her to remember, wouldn't you? Oh. Best put- bury the head so she can't- don't remember. Well, it was a reminder so as not to put it about. <laughs> and did it work? <laughs> oh, I don't know! I love that. Again, <laughs> that to me is an amazing thing to do. And you go, did it work? <laughs> I mean, you've got quite an interesting mind, actually. I mean, you are, in some ways, really, really bright and intelligent. I, I love the way you think. Uh, you're one of the cleverest blokes in some ways that I know. Yeah, I know it says I've got common sense. Well, yeah. And that's, that's more important than knowing about, you know, golf But it's, it's what, it, it, you really, you, it's like you follow the subplot, which is quite an interesting thing, do you know what I mean? It's like, it, you tell you a story, you'll always pick up on something that I didn't even think was an important bit. It's like you're always, you're, you're looking out of the window all the time. So what's important about that Ed thing? What do you mean? The head in a jar. What's, so it's, what a it's a grotesque thing to do. It's, it's, it, it shows, yeah, um, ego, power, cruelty, and revenge. Although I think it probably did work, because he is called Peter the Great. 
Yeah. So you'd assume you got, you got it right? Yeah. I don't see how you can query that. That's the sort of facts you give us. You see now, you're on the other side of the fence, and you've got questions, just like we've always got questions. No, but in Carl's thing, it would have been, turns out, some weird happened, right, and he was still alive. <laughs> yeah. And so she was still having sex with body, and yeah. his head was watching. <laughs> yeah. And Peter the Great didn't even know. Oh, see how he's perked I, I understand, up? I understand what, what you're saying. Now, I've learned some other stuff, so we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, you know, educate you a bit before three. But I want to know, to see what, I'll tell you what education I want. I want to know what sort of things I can buy this weekend. Butt plugs. No. Have you got any adverts? Oh, yeah. Excellent. And I know life sometimes can be a drag. God gave rock and roll to you by Kiss on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. I'm bloody edge. glad he did, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, I am. Cheers. Carl Pilkington's with us as well. He's learned some stuff while uh, the song's been on. He's had a couple of calls, one from a bloke, one from a woman who worked in a sex shop, and you learnt quite a lot. I can see your eyes widening. What have you learnt then about butt plugs? I haven't really learnt anything. I don't- I still don't understand Yes, this. you have. No, but she's just, the woman was just saying, you know, it spices things up a bit. Yeah. Well, what do you need to do that for? The end <laughs> result is always the same, I think. <laughs> so why complicate it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you with me, though? These people who say, you know, they do stuff all night, it's like, what's the point? That's why I like short stories and that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. So. Excellent. If I wish people could see what he looks like when he's talking yeah. about it. Oh, in fact, he's in heat next week, Steve. Right. Um, Is yeah, yeah, they've put a picture of him. They could do the grab off the, the DVD, mm -hmm. and he's behind the scenes, and, uh, he's got his little picture in heat, and he right. hates it, don't you? Well, I'm a bit annoyed because I didn't want it in. <laughs> Why are you worried? Just don't want people no, knowing what, you look what like. I look like and that. Why? Were you on the DVD? Yeah, but... It's to public domain. Anyone can take it off there and put it on the paper now. But I, but that's extras on a DVD. And I'm just thinking not that many people. If they watch it, they won't take it in, stuff like that. What are you worried about then? Just, I don't... This, like me brother and sister and stuff who I don't see anymore, if they know what I look like now, they might- What do you mean if they know what you look like now? They've just got to imagine little Carl Pilkington with no hair. No, I've, I've changed quite a lot because I work hard, don't I? So I've aged quite badly. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm just thinking if they- You've got the hair of a Chinaman, But yeah. sorry, why- why is it a problem for your brother and sister to see you and to- Because I don't see them anymore, do I? And they'll come out of the woodwork now. What, what, what? They're after what? your millions. No, no, so they're sitting at home, they're looking at heat, and there goes Carl, and oh, Carl's my brother- my brother- my brother, right? Oh, maybe I'll go and see him. I don't- I don't want the hassle. But they could find out where you are what's in time. Hassle? What's the hassle, then? It's just hassle of- Having friends and family and that. <laughs> you mean this, don't you? Yeah, is you know that I'm not not into be you know having. But if either that. your brother or your sister came to your door, would you not welcome in it? Welcome them in and give them a cup of tea. Do you know what? He bumped into his sister right after about seven years in a car park somewhere, right? And she went, "Oh, I got a picture of my my new kid. Do you want to see it?" He went, "Not really. All kids look the same." And she went off in half. Unbelievable. Yeah, but that's the problem though, isn't it? She she hadn't seen me for years and years. That's the way I am. I'm not like being rude or anything. I'm just says what comes in me head. Oh, don't give me that. Don't do that. I'm not rude. It's what comes in me head. That's a rubbish excuse. Not rude. Know me, know my ways. Mm. Yeah. Right. Am I wrong then? Let's look at it. Let's look at the. What hey, I said. there's an ounce of Barmer's cakes. Know <laughs> me, know my ways. Get out, you twiddle flunt. <laughs> what is that? What sort of philosophy is that? Know me, I'm rude, and take it or leave it. I'm not it. being rude. You what? are being rude. What, saying that all babies look the same? It's your nephew! You didn't even bother to have a look, you could have been courteous yeah, and had a look at the picture. If it was a first, I'd say fair enough, but she's got loads of kids. Oh, fair enough. What kind of woman is she? <laughs> yeah. Mm. How fussy was Carl as well with the tea? He talks about oh. you with the chairs. He was looking at what tea bags they were, I went, oh, PG tips, oh, okay. It's a bit strong, PG. I can't believe you've got favourite tea bag. What's your favourite tea bag? Twinings English breakfast. Can you really tell the difference? Yeah, I can. I've done like a little test on it because my mate was saying, "Oh, it's rubbish. It's all in your head." Mm. And he had a selection of tea bags. <laughs> uh, we had nothing else going on. He said, "Right, what I'm going to do? I'm going to make three teas." And he used Tetley PG Twinings. Straight away, I got the Twinings. Straight away. P 
Party oh, time. Yeah. Party time in the Pilgrim household. Oh, man alive. Oh, where was this? How old were you? Oh, it was just going back a, a few months. I was like, uh, I was like a Jilly Goulden. Just sort of, uh, having a little... You can tell by the smell of a PG. Because it's strong tea, that. Mm. Very strong. Uh, Twinings is quite, uh, fresh and light. <laughs> Uh, Tetley was just the one in the middle. Can they get their money back? If they have paid for this, can they get their money back? And I love the money back. Illegally download it with the this people isn't that... This is for the thing, is it? We're just having a chat. Oh, we can tell, like, like the tea bags, we can tell the quality podcasting from the rubbish, can we? We'll take this out. If this is still in, then it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, uh, let's start now. Let's, let's start. <laughs> right. Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So, just just because breakfast do it and that, and uh, just just leave it maybe this week. See what happens. See if we need it. See, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know. Play a record a minute, Carl. I want to talk to I'll talk to you off air. Play a record. What? What's the what's the what's the uh, email address again? Ricky at xfm dot co uk. Okay, right? that's where the email the answers in. So we've got to, we've got to remind you who show it is. Play a record. All right. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. That is brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. <laughs> it always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Once yeah. more, please. Well, Carl, do you reckon you could sort out, do, do other people that have real jingles with their name on it and, that and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it, for Monkey News that he does. Why is Christian doing Monkey News? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough Monkey News to go around. Well, <laughs> right? hold on though, I don't want cast offs. No, I thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but wait, new? Wait, wait, Come on, wait. what's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week, he's doing like the, you know, the news at ten type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday, we're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman monkey news night. We look at stuff in, more in depth. Well, you've very much right? behind the monkey news, it's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own spin. You're, the, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, are we, so but ours isn't called monkey news anyway. It's sort of generic term like the news. But ours is called chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's he's seen a bit of monkey news in it. Oh, so, hey. are we doing it or not? Well, I, I I've got no reason I, I, to stop I, I, doing I, monkey I, news. I, I, it, it, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I know. Should we not do that? I said that David Attenborough did monkey news before all of us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm missing no, out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not listening to it. I'm not saying I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My point is this. There's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to uh, monkey news in the week. They're perhaps they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend with Carl Pilkington. So right. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. You ready? Yeah. Right. There's this monkey. Right? Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. Right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know. I didn't say all internet, that. I'm just telling you. Internet. I'm, I'm short Channels on it. Channels on the internet. I'm short <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right, this, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time, they share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, he starts getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean... You mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. All right, the monkey. Okay. I love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff. Yeah. So the train's sort of coming on the right line. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the train's coming and that. I have British Rider listening. Yeah. All right. Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. 
Okay. The railway company, happy with that. I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best monkey for the job. <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right, once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman. It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before like before trains, 19, probably. Well, it's, uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in actually and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. Never. He always, he always has um, t-shirts right done up and long sleeved. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the, the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with, what's wrong with that? You're. A, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why you, your, your IQ is sort of about 80. I think you might be. You might, I, I don't mean uh, there was any, I think it was a genetic sort of, sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just, look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. That's mine. Yeah. And roll over DJ on XFM 104.9. All right? Carl, um, just an email. A question for you. Can you please let me know which school Carl went to? What school did he go to? Uh, Cessav. What? Cessav. Cessav? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it was on Cecil Avenue. Cecil Avenue, in Manchester. Yeah. It's just he says, I'd like to know so that I don't send my kids to the same place. <laughs> he also <laughs> says, uh... <laughs> He says, P.S., does Carl look like Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Yes. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, in fact, I was just putting a little bald wig on you, wasn't I? Like he needs one. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, uh, if it's you want to some of the fun and games we have when the songs are on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah did it hurt? Just a it... little bit. The, 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 the bit that worried me is when you said, let me just staple it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was trying to get it under your chin because it looked funnier. And he was scared. Oh. I never saw it. Do you remember I did that thing with the tea towel? Have you told Steve about that? I don't think I have. It's not something I'd shout about, to be honest. Go on. Uh, went round his place. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, before you go, I must try something. Cos I couldn't get squeezing hard enough. I can't, cos I'm not strong enough to hurt him anymore now, or am I? Uh, oh. I think I, I can take it a bit more than I could at the start. Yeah, so I wanted to squeeze his head more, so what did I do? So he said, uh, just hang on, I've got a tea towel, he brought a tea towel in now, I need something, uh, sort of long and thin. Uh, what can I get? He's asking his girlfriend, where's that there? Comes in with a spatula, mm -hmm. right? He puts the tea towel on my head, uh, and manages to sort of put the spatula in and turn it round so that the tea towel is tightening on my head. Yeah. <laughs> using little pressure, would you say, from you? Yeah, just little, it was brilliant, it was like a tourniquet, and I just turned it a little bit, and he screamed almost straight away, didn't you? It hurts. <laughs> but so, I don't, I, but, but why did you think that was good? When would you need to use that tool? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did it on my other board mate, Rob, who was over, and he screamed as well. Cos he, he just put a tea towel around, like a little, uh, bandana, just stick the wooden spoon down the back, just turn it, and it, it's even half a turn, isn't it? Mm. And it really... Hopefully children listening will be trying that on their friends. <laughs> No, no, they won't. Don't try that at home. Um, I've got another fact for you, Carl. Go Might on. be of interest to you. Just the final one. The ancient Babylonians had Can few. What? I'll just stop you there. <laughs> What's a Babylonian? <laughs> <laughs> My head's gonna burst. What do you mean? What's a Babylonian? I've never heard of one. No, but we'll think. Work out. What's an Evertonian? Someone who supports Everton. Well, or from. From Liverpool. Yeah, so what's a Babylonian? He's from Baba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well anyway, some people from Baba, ancient Baba, 
They didn't have any very, very many doctors in those days, all right? Because they felt that illness, illnesses should be left to the wisdom of the public, right? So if you were sick, okay, you were, pla you were placed in the city centre, right? And then a passerby... I'm sorry, Baba. I'm sorry, Baba. And, uh... A passerby who had suffered from the same ailment, or who had seen it treated in the past, they would pass by, they would give them advice on how <laughs> to be cured. Do you understand? So there'd be no doctor, it's just people passing by would see, they'd say, what's wrong with you? And they'd say, well, blah, 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 I've had the same thing, here's some advice. And pedestrians were forbidden to pass such an individual without inquiring about the complaint and prescribing for it if they knew how to. So hang on, so there's someone ill. Yep. It's outside the town hall. Yeah. Uh, people walk past, go, what's up with you? They yep. go, oh, my foot hurts, and they go, You've got to do this to get rid of yeah. that. Yeah. And were they ever right? Well, what do you mean? Were they ever right? Well, uh, how do we know? <laughs> what are you telling me? What? What have you just told me? What am I meant to take from that? You just said strangers sort of say, you've got that wrong with you. you I think he's sulking. I don't think he's ever going to take anything we tell him again because we don't, no, but I don't like understand the fact that goes, the... well, uh, um, uh, 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 it, um, uh, monkey, monkeys can do armed robberies and we go, no they can't. I don't understand what the problem is. But how is what? that different from telling me that a Chinese woman ate dirt? <laughs> how is that not the same sort of thing? Because that's weird. Someone sat in Trafalgar Square going, I've got a headache and I go take some Neurofen, isn't, isn't shocking. I'm not a doctor, I've given a bit of advice. But n neither is the dirt lady. She's not particularly interesting. Neither of them are particularly interesting. I'm just trying to give you an example of the same sort of drivel you feed us every week. Would you uh, sort of have tea round at her house? It's weird. The Chinese woman. Right, so it's weird. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's weirdness that you're interested in. See, I thought that you were actually interested in sort of learning that interesting well, sort of stuff. But if it's weird, it helps. <laughs> if it's weird, it helps. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be major news. The other day there was something about, uh, this, this fella who, I think he wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, he was trying all his life to be an actor. Couldn't get a gig anywhere, right? So when he died, he said, right, I'm gonna leave all my money to the theatre as long as that theatre uses my skull in that, in that play they do with the head. Hamlet. In Hamlet. So that's that sort of news, and what? it's weird. Right. What money did he have if he'd been struggling actor? <laughs> he had he had some money in that. What did he do? I don't know. Oh, that's what him. I'm interested in. What he did. Yeah, no, that's what Steve. Matter, though, yeah, and that's what me and Steve are interested in. What he did. How he earned his money. So, because yeah, you, you were going to educate us this week with some interesting facts. Oh, yeah, come on. Then. Is that it, or have you got more? Well, that, that's weird. That's, but that's not educational. You didn't give me his name, you didn't give me when, you didn't give me what theatre. No, theater. but also to, to take from it, do you know what I mean? If people listening go, oh, I'm a bit like that. It's like, if, if you've got to have, be dead and have your skull on stage, that isn't the job for you. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. If it takes that much, c give it up, do something else. Right? Yeah. Uh, what else have I taught you? I don't know. You haven't taught us, so you've, uh, you've never taught me anything. See, we'll just have to sort of... What, agree to disagree? Right. I don't know what you can sort of learn from this. Go on then. Uh, seven up, the drink. Yep. Right. This is, we're, on, we're actually on air now, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, this is right, it. Right, okay. This, is this, it, this, this This is a radio show yep. that we're paid Forget for. That, then. Forget No, that, come man. on, no, come on, seven up! <sighs> it's not really, not it's important. Not interesting. No, it's not interesting. It's not interesting. Go on, no, come but on then. Come the, on. Little, the little red dot, that's above the seven on the can, do you know, it says seven yeah. up and the little yeah. red dot. Yeah. That red dot's there because the creator of it, uh, was an albino, and he had red eyes, and he had that little thing there, that's his little trademark. Is that true? It's true. That's quite interesting. Right then. So mm. that's what I'm saying. It's not that important, but it's interesting. If it's true, that's interesting. It isn't, it's true and it's interesting. Okay, that's good. You, know, you know Coke used to contain, um, real cocaine? So well, like, they, they used to be medicines, didn't they? Tonics, yeah. No, they were medicines. I read that, um, tomato ketchup and Coca-Cola. Started off as medicines. Probably not a medicine. Probably more of a tonic because it probably a pick pick me up, wasn't it? If I had coke in it and caffeine and sugar, and same as ketchup, probably lots of vitamin C and lots of sugar. It was probably more of a tonic. It wasn't really a medicine. They didn't say cancer. Have this on your chips. It's some HP. Wasn't a medicine. It was... Well, it was kind of. All right. Okay. Exactly. Let's agree to disagree on that particular one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Is that it, Carl? You've given us the seven up thing. Okay. Uh, I've told you about the goldfish. 
Not really, but yeah. Uh... He didn't say anything about goldfish. This is your fact, right? You know what? A goldfish might might have longer memories than some people think. <laughs> That's not a fact. That, that under no circumstances would imagine, imagine, Magnus Magnuson saying, uh, <laughs> "What animals might have longer <laughs> memories than most people think?" This is goldfish, correct? <laughs> imagine that as a question. How is that a fact? If you ever have children, you can educate them with this kind of drivel. Is this how you're going to raise your kids? So their minds just pump that, full that of this That'd be my rubbish. job. I'd keep them interested with stuff like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne does the proper stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree there is some proper stuff? Yeah, but I wouldn't make him do it. I'd just sort of leave the book there, and then if he read it, I'd go, that's good, that he's- What book would you think? What, the fiftieth, <laughs> most freakiest people ever to be born? Give him that to start with. <laughs> would you t what, what, what would you tell me your favourite was? The little fella who was playing the keyboard? That or the three-legged fella. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he's learnt that. That's the first day at school. What, what would you teach him the second day at school? I don't know, cos it, uh, it, it, why, why do owls have to turn 180 degrees to look the other way? Cos they've got big eyes. Yeah, and what's that mean? What do you mean, what's it mean? Like? Can I just... I don't think you should have children. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Suzanne's always saying, you know, that's... You know, she'd, she'd like to... Hear tiny feet running round the flat. Stuff. Yeah. I just said, let's get a let's get a little midget cleaner. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Right, Steve. Oh, I've got my headphones on. Hello, who's that? Oh, my name. Hold on. Who, sorry? Nicholas. Nicholas, hello, mate. Uh, you're not going to swear, are you? No, I'm not going to swear. Keep it clean. Oh, yeah, well. keep them keen. Um, what, uh, what, what were you calling about? I'm phoning about your plugs. About, pl- m- m- well, not my plugs, but sure, plugs <laughs> in general. What, uh, do you know much about them? No, are you a no, plug user thinking. yourself? No, I'm just thinking if maybe you've got some gay friends and you're spending the night at their place, you might want to use one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, you mean experiment with them, or? No, so you can make sure they're not going to do anything while you're asleep. Yes. Could, I, could I suggest, could I suggest, uh, you know, just lock the door? I mean, <laughs> that is easier to can me. I, can I make a bigger suggestion? <laughs> That's probably the most homophobic thing we've had said on the show today. <laughs> Thanks very much for your call. <laughs> Right, okay, yeah. good. Well, that's why we shouldn't put people on the fly. <laughs> just, you know, without checking first. <laughs> I think Carl's made a good point. That's the kind of, a, of listener we've got. <laughs> um, right, Rockbusters. So, Rockbusters, um, we, you know, it's a little clue, some initials, three different clues. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win the, the load of stuff that we've got. So, um, first one. Um, here's the clue. Stop throwing that fruit about. Oh. Oh. Yeah. What's the initial? That's C B. C B. C B. Stop throwing that fruit about. Yeah. All right. Is Anders listening? Has he emailed us in yet? Anders, not had, a, not had any response from Anders. I'll keep uh, keeping. Maybe he hasn't stopped listening. Because right. he doesn't like the show. He's gone off. I hope he hasn't gone off the show. <laughs> so, uh, the second one. Um, that Scottish fella has made an error. That Scottish fella has made an error. Yeah, that's- Interesting. That's M. Him. Right, that right. Scottish fella has made an error, right? Okay. And, uh, the last one, uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with them. <laughs> you can make a right load of toast with them? Yeah. All right, what's the matter there? That's G. G, I was thinking it might be bread for a minute, but no. Uh, G. So, uh, so just very quickly, stop throwing that fruit about, CB. <laughs> I've got, I've got the last one. All right. Scottish <laughs> fella- It doesn't work, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Well. That Scottish fella's made an error, that's M. And, uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with M, that's G. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can- We've got the CDs, we've got horses, we've got mammals on VHS, we've got U2, uh, we've got a couple of CDs including Johnny Cash. Here's a new tune from a, a, a new fella called Papa Garcia. See what you think of this. Uh, see, if he was on MTV I couldn't say his name. Why? What is it again? Papa Garcia. Right, here's a new one from Papa Garcia. Brilliant. Uh, for us, then call up because Carl will like you. You'll be friends with Carl, won't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Quick, the clues. What's the answers? We always do this. We're running so out of time. Don't worry, we've got a tune, and then we'll come back with the answers for Rockbusters. Sure. A lot what of great we... prizes. All right, um, we'll have a bit of uh, cash. Johnny yeah. Cash. One of the prizes we're giving away. Johnny Cash and Desperado. That's from his new album, uh, which is a collection of new songs and covers, which is one of the prizes given away on this week's Rockbusters. And uh, can we have the clues and the answers and the winners? Yeah. Um, first one was stop throwing that fruit about. Stop throwing that fruit about. The that answer is C B. That was Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course it was. Okay. All yeah, right. I'll give you that. Um, the one that you've worked out, I'll do next. The yeah. uh, God, you make a load of toast with them. That Grillers. was G. Gorillas. Gorillas, though, isn't it? Gorillas. Um, and the middle one <laughs> was that Scottish fellas made an error. That was Mystique. <laughs> <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, did anyone get that? Extraordinarily, almost all the people who emailed in. I'm really, I'm beginning it right. to think it's us then, it's because uh, I, I was thinking mistake. I was thinking muck error yeah. and muck mistake, and but mistake. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, do you want to pick a winner? Yeah, I was going to give it, the, the prizes to uh, Amy Massey, who's uh, from Wiltshire, the West Country. <laughs> Losers down there, probably as weird as you. Yeah. So, uh, she's won and congratulations to her. I'm assuming she's listening online or maybe, uh, via some kind of- We must, well, I think we must have a lot of listeners outside London because all these are from Norwich and- yeah. Have we got any listeners in London? <laughs> Places, you know, it's where there's a lot of inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing else to do. Yeah, exactly. Norwich and Wiltshire. Well, you know, cheers for that, Amy. Well done. He yeah. waved then when he said that. He did, yeah. He uh, waved. He's, he's wor- little No, he's working, uh, getting ready for TV. Of course he is, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so it's coming- So is this week? Or could, is it, can it be arranged for this week? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll sort it out. We're talking about things that have, uh, happened since we met. We've, uh, we've done podcasting, we've done the iPod, we've dismissed that. Um, 
See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, c- cat mops, I don't know, it wasn't yours, nor was the tie, was it? The stupid tie. What's that? What's the one about the tie? Um, the tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that, that's something I, I saw somewhere, but it never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good... It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie <laughs> packed with stuff. You want right, Imagine All right, Frank, stuff. nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. What? Um, uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well, all right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, that's weird. What are you so doing? I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, innit? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing on. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice it, give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> a tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something, hands free, and everything's always there. A bag, you put stuff in a bag, you put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags, that's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off, oh, where's the bag? A tie, when you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. Go! The country would look smarter. Right, you have pockets, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got a spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got spare change, I've got, uh, like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. Uh, a pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's whatever. safe, isn't it? Oh, that's, that's a good place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and the, near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when, you, when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, <laughs> pop a tie on, go to the shop and pop a tie on. Well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times, but I'm just saying if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie... You've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If, I mean, come on, John. Don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, I'm with us. Carl Dilkington. Can't. <laughs> This is the worst chair I've ever sat on, and I've sat on some fucking chairs in my life. <laughs> yeah! Right, are we started? One, one. Are we ready? Are we recording? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Right. Hello, and welcome to a brand new series. Oh. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I was getting it. I was getting it all He's fired up. excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. Just seems a bit loud, that. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. Look at that. Look at this, Carl. This is a shambles, this mate. This is a... People have paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? Yeah, I think so. Well, come back here, then. We're doing a podcast, you dopey bald twat. What really? are you doing? Right, go on. We'll just have to go that... with it. What that... are you up to? Like, fucking Davros. Hello? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right, okay, ready? So it was your problem. Oh, Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right, ready? Yeah. Hello, welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St- well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to say hello. Okay, right, okay. Carl, come on, what's the matter with you? What? Thorns. That's no, no blue sky. Beautiful, isn't it? Could and that you... a great track. It's all right, yeah. Just had an email, yeah. That woman who opened the office script could have her head cut off, apparently. When a letter is posted, it becomes the property of the Queen until it reaches the person it was meant for. By opening it, she's committed treason and could be killed. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, Carl, are you? Go on. Apparently, uh, some copies of the office Christmas specials, scripts, got sent to the wrong address, some woman, and, uh, 
Instead, I mean, I don't know what you do in that situation. Normally, if I get mail that's not addressed to me, I just put it, give it to the postman or put it back in the post box. Radio One tried to speak to her, but apparently um, she's got a gag in order, which makes us think that she sold it to the Sunday, so oh, we'll right. we'll read it. We'll read the point. plot yeah. of The Office tomorrow yeah. in the Sunday papers, which uh, ruin it for some people. Ruin it for a lot of people, yeah. But the other thing is... Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if it was sent to her, obviously her name wasn't on it. Oh. If that's if that's true, in which case, I think that's quite a serious offence, isn't it? Well, I, would, I would hope so. I mean, I would hope that yeah, if I sent something in an envelope, it was. But the BBC oh, Ash actually, the BBC thinks that because the person it, they said it was meant to be sent to got his, he thinks maybe that's an excuse. Maybe someone gave her the script and said, "Don't tell her it. Don't say it came from me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know, maybe she's protected someone, I don't know. Yeah, well, I I mean, if, if that is Well, either way, either way, don't sell it to a newspaper. Well, I, yeah. It's just, it's just the kind of mercenary nature of it that I loathe, you know? It's the fact that, and the fact that it's only just now, it makes me wonder if she had it there, lying around in, the off, in, in her house, and someone said to her, well, why don't you go to the papers? Yeah. Try and flog it. But I just don't think it's, I don't think she's going to get a lot for it, because people are going to see it soon. It's not like it's the hit the diaries. Well, they're not I mean? very well written. <laughs> but, I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I don't tell you what I'm frustrated by, it's just the fact that it's like we've worked hard to give people some kind of pleasure for this Christmas, you know, because a lot of people are very depressed, Rick, very yeah. low at this time of year, they've not got what they wanted. But We're trying to cheer them up, giving them a bit of happiness. Yeah, but I, I think she'll be happy if she gets a lot of money. True, true. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's just tacky, really. It's like, well, I just say, if you're a fan of the show and you don't want to know what happens, then don't read the Sundays tomorrow, or at least avoid it when it says, we tell you what happens. The papers might not ruin it, the papers might go... We've got them, but we're not going to ruin it for people. Well, That'd that be, a would nice, be, ideal. be a nice gesture. But, uh, I don't all, know. I, all I can say is it's a good job that I send out the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> so, because that Michael Palin around the world in 80 days will be going to the person who won it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if someone else receives it, they better not try and, do you know yeah. what I mean, keep it. It should go to the winner. Yeah, all exactly. Right? That is a very good point. Mm. So, mm. be warned. Don't open things that weren't addressed to you. Yeah. I Pandora's time, box. Though, there's, a, there's some sort of lesson there. Yeah. What happened? All the evils of the world, wasn't it? Pretty much. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't oh, try to explain brilliant. it to uh, Carl. No, Pandora's box. Go on. Well, told not to open it, opened it, released all the evils that are in the world now. But did did the person say if you open it, loads of evil will come it's out? It's not true. It's not true. It didn't really happen. It's not like evolution. It's not the truth. But you remember that, yeah, you won't listen to some of my stuff. About goldfish and stuff. No, it's not that we don't listen to it. it. It's that you would pass off how all the evils in the world got here. Because I, I don't know if it would be, uh, Pandora opens box! <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of headlines. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, look. It, it, yeah, imagine if Pilkington was on News at 10, okay? We should just explain, you cannot be bothered to read an entire news story. You get everything you need from a headline, don't you? Well, I think... It's enough. I think if they did. Well, the let's news see. Let's see. Let's see if this is enough. No. Let's see right. if this. Oh, okay. If Trent McDonald just read this on the news at ten, it'd be short, and you get back to the the football, or whatever. Yeah, the there we go. And here is the news at two fifteen with Carl Pilkington. Bong. Man who walks backwards around lake falls in. <laughs> okay. Bong. Chinese woman eats dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. Uh, man lives in rubbish dump for ten years. <laughs> Brilliant. Bong. Czech family says they've got a rabbit with three knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Done. Sorry, can you just read a little bit more of the Czech family with three knobs? Uh, Just about a family. Not read it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just about. He, just... he can't read it to himself. I told him to read it to himself. We still hear it. No, he was, because I could see his lips moving. <laughs> Go on. Just this fella who, uh. Had three rabbits. Right, just think of this is Trevor McDonald. Yeah. Okay, carry on, Carl. Okay, oh, is the news right? Good, brilliant. Go on. There's a fella. He's got he's got three rabbits and that, and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> he checks them out. Right. Yeah. Two of the rabbits have got two knobs each. Right. And he goes, "That's a bit weird, isn't it?" Sure. And they're ch throwing them around, sort of chucking, you know, showing them around the family and stuff, yeah. saying, "Look at that. That's weird." Picks up the third one. It's got three. Yeah. So they ate the two with two because they thought. We best keep the third one because a little bit lucky in that. Yeah. It is lucky. Three knobs there, yeah. Now here's the sports news. And that's, <laughs> that's how it would work. Yeah, okay, brilliant. <laughs> we'll read about the Chinese woman who eats dirt. I'm interested it's in said. that. That's it. That is the story, then. not it? What more do you need to know? It's well, I want to know a little bit more. Can you just invent 78 year old Chinese woman. She says she's 78. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder. Yeah. 
<laughs> is my theory. <laughs> uh, Carl's theory is that Chinese people don't age well. And so those Chinese people that say they're 112 are really only 33. Um... That's why he doesn't want to be recognised, because he doesn't want to walk out from here into Chinatown. Yeah. Go uh, on. It just says she's, she's been eating soil for, uh, <laughs> 70 years, she's ate about 10 tons of the stuff. And, uh, stun her no arm. Keep, kept her grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's probably alright for you, isn't it? Because it passes it? through, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, they say, don't they, if you're having a kid, let it play in soil and that, because, um... Well, that's to, to get it immune, yeah, to get, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, lots of, like, um... Things without, with, with, um, sort of, uh, birds and reptiles sometimes swallow, um, soil and, uh, stones because it grinds up stuff, breaks down cellulose for them. Doesn't do you any harm. Right then. One more fact from this book for you, Carl. Apparently, officially, the Second World War is not over. It's not actually over because there's never been an official treaty signed between Germany and Russia. So it's still going on. Interesting or not? Uh, <laughs> not as good as the monkey one and and, and, the, and the woman and, who eats dirt and the Pete the Great and that. Sure, but yeah, it is over, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it though? That's I get. That's what I mean about you annoying me with stuff that you go. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think that is interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was uh, what was it I learnt? What was it I learnt? Um, think of that yeah. as a question. Well, we're all trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, go on. Leonardo, uh... DiCaprio? The, the painter. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. He could, uh... He could write with one hand, draw with the other at the same time. Right. Yeah, that's good. It's all right, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all right. Well, if you have an interesting fact for Carl Pilkington that you think he might be, uh, intrigued by, email ricky.gervais at xfm. What have we got coming up? UK. What have we got coming up? More education stuff. Some good, good tunes and that. Yeah. And, uh, bit of Outcast. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One, two, three, yeah. What's wrong with having a space and filling it? I mean, there's a space between your ears, we'd love to fill that, but... Um, just because it's stuff, it's normally stuff you don't need if you've got too much space and you're filling it. It's like Ricky's house, you've got stuff in there now that you want to add in a smaller flat. You've got dead owls and stuff like that. Like, dead owls? Why are you buying dead owls? No, it's an antique thing. It's an antique stuffed owl, and I was assured it died of natural causes of old age. Yeah, and then sure. this, yeah this it looked in good nick. It didn't look yeah. upset. But dead owls suggest that they just fly into the room and I just leave them there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like they, cr they crack their head. But what? You're just sat in your uh, dressing gown constantly drinking yeah. gin. Oh, Jay, there's another dead owl. <laughs> Clean up. Feed it to the cut. Feed it to the puma. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, I haven't got room for it. I haven't got room for a live owl, never mind a dead one. <laughs> so that's the difference, and that's the same with an iPod, isn't it? With an iPod, because you've got so many gig, you go, what will I have? Well, yeah, but Ricky's not, Ricky's not sat at home looking at an empty space in his flat thinking, I need to fill that with something. I think he would be. What would be there? If that dead owl wasn't there, what would you put there? But you've picked on one thing. You've picked on one Well, that's all you small... can do, I'm just picking on an example. What else do you want me to pick? I'm just saying, I have not got room for a dead owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd never look at one in a shop. I'd go, I can't, I'm not going to buy that because I haven't got the space for it. But why are you obsessed with, like, someone trying to press you into getting this dead owl? I, wonder, I, I mean, it, it seems a weird thing to shout, I have not got space for a dead owl. No, but if I, say if I had an urge to see a dead owl. Right. Natural History Museum, loads of them. Right. I've never seen one and gone, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to the museum, I want one in my house. That to me is like, right, Suzanne, have we got everything? Have we got a dishwasher? Yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Ironing board? Yeah. Right. There's a bit of space there, is there anything you want? Then, if it's like, dead owl? Alright, we've got the room for it. But the way we're, the way we're living now, we've definitely not got room for, for a dead owl. That's all, that's all I was saying, and to me, a dead owl... I, I'd like this to be part of, um, estate agents' patter. <laughs> um, there's a lovely space there for, uh, you can fit in about seven dead owls. They, they, they don't do by square footage anymore. It's, uh, 6,000 dead owls. Um, you idiot. Well, um, yeah, I'm still not convinced by this idea of, uh, this space has got to be filled. You know, people aren't, it's not, people just choose to buy things and fill up their house with those things because they, they give them pleasure. It's Most things they... we've got are junk. If, if you didn't have junk, all you'd have is a, a, a cooker, um, a, a bath, um, maybe a sink, a bed, and that would be it. That anything else, a, a television, 
isn't necessary, is it? You seem to think that people should live like, you know, kind of 19th century mining communities. Well, no, but they, <laughs> like a few years ago, people worked this out, didn't they? They all went minimalistic. Because they Say said. It what? Say it what? Minimalistic. So one more time. Minimalistic. No. No. What, the, what's, what letter are you starting with in that word? M. Okay. Where are you going on from there? Mi- minimum. Well, it must be, mi- it must be minimum. Yeah. Well, so it's what that? Minimalistic. 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 No. No, no, no. You're well, pop- you know what I mean. No, no, wait. You're popping in an M where there should be an N. Minimalistic. You're putting two N's when there should be one N. Right? Minimalistic. Mi- minimalistic. Yes. Wow. Well, woo! Right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> That's so, the end of the uh, the first episode. <laughs> it's gone well. Um, so anyway, a couple of years back, everyone went. Yeah, that was that was the that was the trend, wasn't it? But we've gone back to being clutter clutteristic. The way I live, like I've said to you before, it's the old three month rule. If something's not used over three months, chuck it out because it's not needed. So suitcases. What was the that? Yeah, suitcase. No, he uses a suitcase every two weeks. He's off all the time. Yeah. Uh, most stuff, most stuff at clothes. I'll well, go. if you don't wear a piece of clothing in three months, it's gone. Well, why haven't I wore it in three months? Well, because maybe it's a, a uh, it's a suit or a tuxedo and you've not no, made many I fancy balls. Have, I don't have any clothes like that. I wear the same things anyway. I throw clothes away every three months because I get too fat for them. <laughs> so, you know. But it does seem to me the way you talk, it's like you want to live, as I say, like some kind of 19th century pauper with a big tin bath in the lounge in the one room in your house and all the family bathe in it. And yet you wouldn't be happy with well, that, Well, maybe, maybe. Well, I've told you before about that's, that's something I said when I was younger. What? What did you say? When I was younger, um, I think uh, I was having a bath or something, and I said to my mum, oh, remember when I was in, like, that tin bath in front of the fire? Yeah. She went, what? And yeah. now that's strange, isn't it, that you're saying I'd be happier with that back then? So it's like that was my past life. Well, hang on, hang on. Whoa, we haven't finished whoa, yet. whoa, 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 whoa. What your, do you mean? Your mum Your mum said what you're talking about. You said... How old were you? I uh, must have been a kid if I'm having a bath and my mum sat there. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how you operate. I assume you were, but how old? Must have had time to have a bath. As you get older, you don't have as much time, do you? So I'd say five. I love the fact that after five, you didn't have time for a bath. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's so that... busy. Carl, we've read your diary. One day, it was simply went to the cobblers and back. No, but so you had time to have about 19 baths. No, but as you get older, you sort of go, I haven't got time to sit in a bath where as a kid, it's something to do. you're like staring at ants. When have you ever been too busy to have a bath? One, you're never busy. Two, how can you be too busy to wash? It's like saying too busy to eat. Breathe. Got to breathe last night. Why? I had a bit of work to do. What point are you making? So I'm just saying... This is said, not an anecdote. You said that that I'd be happier back in 1800s or whatever. But what are, you, yeah. so what are you saying that you didn't really have a bath in front of the fire? You yeah, mean I this might... was a glimpse of a past life, is yes. what you think? Yes. This is, you, this is just such a non-point. <laughs> this is just nothing. This is this, If you'd said, well, then I went off to see one of those people who regresses you, and although it was a load of old bollocks, he regressed me, and it turns out I was the king of Sheba. I love those things, people. Everyone thinks they've lived before, right? Mm. Did I tell you that um, there was a, a documentary um, about these people in um, uh, Los Angeles that, that they'd lived before and they'd come back and and uh, they did they did a, a come as you were party. So they went as the people in their previous life. All of them famous. Of course they were. Kings, queens, uh, leaders of men. Not as I was a stable hand, I forget my name. Right, two Napoleons, one of them's lying. <laughs> I mean, it, absolute twaddle. <laughs>